I know how emotionally raw that I am still, and probably many of you still are, after being hurt by a narcissist. And I also know how hard it can be to overcome the pain of what someone else has done to you, especially when it occurs because of inhumane, cruel, and senseless behaviors at the hands of a narcissist. Overcoming the complete shock and utter betrayals of narcissistic abuse is certainly no walk in the park. I'm still realizing things daily that have me scratching my head in utter disbelief. I wanted to talk today about several of the things that hurt so much during narcissistic abuse and may be really hard for some people to let go. But first, I wanted to tell you that this is an opportunity, just like the other things that happen in your life, to grow and to heal. I'm figuring out that none of this was really about him. It was all about me. Through my relationship with him, it's showing me the parts that I needed to deeply heal within myself. Something that I didn't realize without the ton of bricks repeatedly being dropped on my head. And here it is. People treat you how you treat yourself. And I wasn't treating myself very well at all. Everything else was more important than me taking care of my own emotional needs. But I didn't know how, and I was never really shown. And because I lacked self-soothing skills, I would busy myself every time I got emotionally distressed with anything else that would distract my attention. When I really needed myself, I didn't show up. The abuse from the narcissist set a fire in my belly to set forth on a path to finally begin to heal my broken parts. One that I wouldn't have been aware or seen before now. I've made a conscious decision to look within myself with tenderness, love, care, and commitment as to why this has happened. Not only once, but repeatedly. I've made an internal agreement not to shame or blame myself because being in these relationships were part of my life for a reason. This has involved me releasing the anxiety that's kept me stuck into, feel, into feeding my broken parts and setting solid intentions and commitment to value, love, and respect myself. Yes, it does take incredible energy and effort. However, even amongst this intense self-work that I've been doing, the pain was so much less than feeling stuck with no way out. The work and my emotions have a purpose. They have a goal. They have helped me transform my life and to be a much happier person. The most powerful thing that I've realized is it's all about me and it's no longer about my narcissist. So I want to work through the list of things, of hurtful things, and I'd like to share with you some of the things that I've done um, in self-reflection so that maybe you could do the same and help heal yourself and transform your own life. One, the lies and betrayal. For many of us, this was the worst aspect of being narcissistically abused. Narcissists are pathological liars. That's because they've created a false self. Liars betray people because they say one thing and do another. They fake all sorts of love, care, and tenderness to secure their agenda while doing actions that show us the exact opposite. The questions that I've asked myself in reflection was, did you lie to yourself about what's happening in this relationship? And I did. I lied to myself about what exactly was going on. The second question, did you ignore what your emotions were screaming at you within the abuse and choose to sell yourself acceptable stories instead? And I answered this yes as well. When things happened within the relationship, when he would gaslight me and um, I would make excuses of, you know, maybe he is right. Maybe I am the one that's crazy. And when he would devalue me and say nasty things, I would say, well, maybe he's just having a bad day. The third question to ask yourself 
that I asked myself was, did you grow up in a family where members lied, there were family secrets, or false appearances were created? And I answered that one yes as well. And I had to take a look at that because I realized that all throughout my childhood, it was what people saw from the outside in that mattered to my mom. And in doing so, I continued to lie about to myself about what was really going on and the abuse that I had suffered at the hands of my mother and the alcoholism that my dad had. And it was just a persona that everything was okay. And so in answering these questions, it allows me to grow and approach my relationship through my adult self that does honor, respect, and care. Rather than ignoring the warning signs and the emotional signal, signals, I can now be attached to relationships that, and, and, and not be attached to relationships uh, through my unhealed child. I'm learning how to speak up, set boundaries, and know that I don't have to tolerate abuse to be lovable or worthy. The second hurt, the blaming and deflecting. Being with a narcissist is like being scapegoated without mercy for the narcissist's atrocious behavior. Many people get hooked into trying to justify, argue, and reverse the madness by trying to plead for justice and sanity and make the narcissist accountable. The questions I ask myself is, have you felt guilty and taken the blame in your life previously? I did that a lot. I did that as a child. I would take blame and responsibility for things that I didn't even do. Um, I remember on one occasion, um, I was four years old and my sister had stuck a sticker on the closet door and my mom spanked me repeatedly until I finally said, yes, I did it just to get her to stop. The second question is, have you been very fear fearful about what other people think of you? Now, Yes, again, um, I feared what other people thought of me. I thought that, you know, I wasn't worthy of unless uh, I created this false self of, of me. The third question is what truly is the way you think about yourself and your own rights and worthiness? I didn't respect myself at all. And that's why I continue to allow the things to happen to me that were happening is because I had no self-respect and no self-value. The next question I asked was, what are your levels of self-talk? Are they loving or condemning? I had no loving self-talk. I didn't know what loving self-talk was. I berated and beat myself up for every mistake that I made. The last question I asked in this section was, are you usually very hard on yourself? And do you hold yourself to very high expectations? And again, I answered those, yes. And the healing part of this was knowing that I could learn to heal and release my guilt, my feelings of being wrong and being responsible for other people. I've learned to accept and have worthiness towards myself. And I'm learning how to love and support myself rather than being hard on myself. The third hurt, discovering the relationship was never real. This is another huge kicker for people because there are very few things that could damage a person's self-esteem as profoundly of being made to believe you're the love of somebody's life to discover that down the road, they never actually loved you or even cared about you. And this was my biggest hurt because I really wanted to believe that um, he loved and cared about me and I was one of the most important things in his life. And that just wasn't true. He loved and cared about himself and I was just his narcissistic supply. So the questions I asked myself in reflection is, do you have a real relationship with yourself? I answered that no, because I didn't know who I was. I was too busy trying to make other people love me by being what they needed me to be. Next question, 
Do you really love and cherish yourself? Do you really commit to yourself, meaning your self-care and your self-emotional support? I didn't know how to do any of that. Um, so I forsake myself for that of other people. And I'm learning that my greatest mission in life is to learn and to accept myself. And it was never anybody else's job. Because people can never grant you what you aren't granting yourself. Heal the wounds that made you believe that you weren't lovable or acceptable. Doing the work on loving yourself emotionally and practically. Then create relationships with others who have the resources to grant more of the same. The next hurt. The cruelty of devalue and discard. Narcissists begin relationships with idolization. Then they intentionally treasure people as new and exciting sources of narcissistic supply. And they know flattery is potent as, as a manipulation tool. Because the idolization was false, the, re, the reality of devalue and discard inevitably follow. Oftentimes, this happens multiple times within the relationship. In self-reflection, I asked, are you your own fair weather friend? In that you like yourself when things are going well, but you dislike yourself when, you're, when they're not going so good. I answered that yes. I was my own fair weather friend. Um, when things were going great, I was happy. I was in a great mood. I was very full of myself. And when things were going bad, um, the old ex internal messages that I learned as a child that I was stupid, I wasn't worthy, I lived in a dreamland. Those all came coming back. Um, the next question is, what do you do with your own emotional needs when emotional pain strikes? Are you there for yourself or do you let yourself down? I can't continuously let myself down. Did the messages you received from your family equal you being loved and accepted when you were appeasing others and unlovable and unacceptable when you weren't? And in my family of origin, that's exactly what it was. When you were doing things to please other people, then you got some love. And when you weren't appeasing them or doing things for other people, then you were the dirt on the floor. And that happened in my relationships as well. So healing the wounds that caused you to be conditional with your own levels of self-love and self-acceptance and you learn how to be present and supportive with yourself at all times. The next hurt, no empathy. It comes as a grave and stunning shock to discover that narcissists are cruel, calculating, and unlike non-narcissistic people. They don't pull up when they know that they've hurt people, but thrive on it instead. It is then that we realize that the narcissists are not human by any definition that we know human to be. The questions and reflection that I ask myself are, are you incredibly hard on yourself or even cruel to yourself when you really need your love and caring support instead? And I was, I would, like I said before, I would tell myself that I was stupid. I couldn't do it. I would self-sabotage myself. Um, the next question, did your family use punishing tactics to discipline? Or did family members engage in self-punishing behaviors? Uh, my family used punishing tactics to discipline. When you didn't do something that they wanted you to do, you were shunned. You were not talked to. You were sent to another room. In healing, know that you can learn to have incredible empathy, care and concern for yourself, and act accordingly. Learn how to heal the wounds that are making it difficult for you to have empathy for yourself, leaving behind all the self-destructive and self-abusive tendencies. The next hurt, never being good enough for the narcissist. The disorder of narcissism includes devaluing of others in order to try to make themselves feel better about themselves. Being with a narcissist creates walking on broken eggshells. You can never be good enough for the, in the narcissist's eyes. It's an impossible task. In self-reflection, are you... Oh, no. 
Where are you? Where are you? Own expectations of yourself. Are your own expectations of yourself unreasonable? Do you berate yourself for the things you haven't done rather than congratulate for the you, yourself for the things that you have done? I would berate myself and beat myself up for things that I didn't do. And I never congratulated myself on accomplishments. It was always, well, I was supposed to do that. Are you ever good enough to love and accept yourself right here, right now? I never was. I didn't feel that way. Now, it's a different story. Did your family operate through conditional love where you never felt good enough? And I never felt good enough for my mom um, until the day she died. I was still trying to uh, get gain love from her. In healing, know that you can learn to love and accept yourself regardless of any other variable. Learn how to unconditionally love yourself and know that you're lovable simply because you exist. And knowing that your lovability and worth is never dependent on external sources. The final hurt is the infidelity. It's common for narcissists to be emotionally and sexually unfaithful and replace you with another source of narcissistic supply quickly. This is obviously incredibly painful, especially when the narcissist states whatever you want to hear to convince you that they would never behave in such a way. Most of them will accuse you of exactly what they're doing. In reflection, do you commit yourself to other people to the detriment of your own values and needs? I answered that yes. Have you ever sold yourself out even when you know how much it hurts to do so? I would do things for other people even though I didn't want to. Um, I no longer do that. Were other people outside of the family more important than the family? My mom's friends were always more important than me and my sister. Um, it was always about her. In healing, know that you can learn to commit to yourself, to your values, your truth, and your needs completely in order to create a life that's aligned with who you really are. Align your needs and values and establish a firm commitment of loyalty to yourself. So the reason why I'm sharing all this with you is to help you move up and out of your emotional pain. Naturally, initially, we're all hurt so intensely, and this is perfectly acceptable. However, the real question is, is how long do we stay in the agony? The truth is we all want, we all went through the aspects of intense emotional agony for very serious reasons, so that we, we could heal our wounds once and for all. If we don't decide to take the opportunity to heal, we're going to stay stuck in the pain. We will believe our life has ended, that there's nothing to look forward to, and we may never recover. We may be too scared to try to trust someone else, or it's very likely that our unhealed and raw wounds will attract another abuser. Or we may severely distrust someone who isn't an abuser and sabotage the possibility of a healthy relationship. We can only experience events and peoples in life which match our inner identity. And if we can't feel a great life is poss a possibility or a probability and heal our own emotional wounds, then the great life that waits us on the outside isn't going to be possible. Narcissistic abuse is not normal and it's certainly not something that anybody's brain can wrap around rationally or digest. Narcissistic abuse is like a disease to your soul and it's been said by many that it rapes you at every level. But by healing your emotional childhood wounds it's going to enable you to create a life that's going to be so great and so grand that you're, you're, and you're going to be so happy. So I encourage you to do the work that you need to do to heal your emotional wounds and thrive. 